Let us now take the second example from model 1. The question here is what is the speed of the train? So we simply have to find out the speed of the train. Let us take it as ST. The first statement says 280 meter long train crosses a signal pole in 18 seconds. And the second statement says 280 meter long train crosses a platform in 45 seconds. So from statement 1 we know that the length of the train is 280 meters and it can cross a signal pole in 18 seconds. Now from the concepts of time and distance we know that when the train is crossing a pole the equation is speed of the train is equal to length of the train divided by time. But because when it is crossing a pole the length of the other body is 0 and its speed is also 0. So we very clearly understand that this is the equation to be used in statement number 1 as it is crossing a pole. Now to find out the speed of the trains we have to know the length of the train and the time which is taken to cross the pole. From statement number 1 we know that length of the train is 280 meters and the time taken to cross the pole is 18 seconds. That means if we substitute these two values in this equation we can find out the speed of the train. So very clearly statement 1 alone is sufficient to answer the question. Why? Because the question says what is the speed of the train and that we are able to find out from statement 1 alone. Now let us go for statement 2 and check if that statement can give us the answer or not. Statement 2 says 280 meter long train crosses a platform in 45 seconds. So here the length of the train is 280 meters and it can cross a platform in 45 seconds. Now when a train is crossing a platform the equation to be used is speed of the train is equal to length of the train plus length of the platform divided by time. This is as we have discussed in time and distance. When the train crosses a platform its speed should be equal to length of the train plus length of the platform by time. Now here if to find out the speed of the train we need to know the remaining three variables that is length of the train, length of the platform and the time taken to cross the platform. From statement 2 length of the train is 280 meters that means length of the train is known to us and it can cross the platform in 45 seconds. So we also know that the time is equal to 45 seconds but the length of the platform is not given in the statement. Once the length of the platform is not given we cannot find out the speed of the train. So very clearly statement 2 though it gives the length of the train and the time taken to cross the platform will not help us in finding out the answer. Why? Because to find out the answer from statement 2 we should also know the length of the platform. So statement 2 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. So clearly we can understand that statement 1 alone can give the answer but statement 2 alone cannot give the answer for this question. And hence we can say that answer should be option 1 that is only statement one alone is sufficient and since one statement alone is sufficient we need not go for combination remember friends we have to combine both the statements together if and only if both the statements individually fail to answer the question since one statement is giving the answer we can directly go for option one as the answer that is statement one alone is sufficient so this is how we simply need to use the various concepts that we have discussed from quantitative aptitude and sometimes from reasoning as well to answer questions from data sufficiency. Questions can be asked from any topic. It may be time and distance or maybe time and work or profit and loss and so on. We simply have to use those formulae or concepts that we have learned and apply here to check which of the statements are sufficient to answer the question.